Welcome back to Android's Q&A. My name is Jace, and this is where we try and deal with your most pressing Android issues, like security. Now, we all know the crazy NSA is listening to your phone calls, reading your texts, and there's little the average person can do about it. Unless, of course, you're also prepared to be a little crazy to protect yourself. Wait a minute. Getting a signal. Bollywood! Sadly, I'm sorry, I can't help you with the NSA hack question, but I can help my friend Nasser with a security question that I'm sure many of you have. Hey Jace, I wanted to ask you this. I want to sell my Android phone, but I have to clear all my data beforehand. But I also heard that it could be restored by someone else using some apps that could be used against you. Is there any way that I can prevent this? Good question, Nasser, and there's really three steps to this process. Number one is you want to remove your SIM card. There's no reason that the new user will need your SIM card, so make sure you do remove that. Second step is to remove your micro SD card. Now, in some cases, the condition of sale may be that the SD card is included in the sale of the phone. If that's the case, make sure you format that micro SD card before you sell the phone. Now the third step is to do a full factory reset by going to your settings here. All right now, so I should add here that it is conceivable that even after you do all of this, someone with the right tools and experience could recover your data and use it in a way that you don't want. So to add another level of security, you could add Android encryption. So you can go to the settings and security tab and add that, that will take some time, but it will add a level, level of assurance. And the second and probably most simple thing is just to vet the person you're passing the phone on to. Well, if you're selling it to someone you know or giving it to someone you know, you're much less likely to have a problem with that data in the long run. Good luck, Nasser. Moving on to a secret Twitter app just for tablets. Hey Jace, remember when the Note 10.1 2014 came out? and it came with a tablet-optimized Twitter app, and it was said that this app would then come out to the Play Store for the general public by the end of 2013. Well, it's 2014 now, and there's no Twitter for tablets. When do you think this is coming out? Great question, and you should know that our own Android authorities, Joe Hindi and Andrew Grush, wrote about this app uh, when it initially came out. I've linked to those articles below. But the obvious question remains, why would Twitter spend so much time developing an app just for one tablet, the Note 10.1 2014. Doesn't make much sense. Well, Twitter is not just developing a Twitter app for Android tablets. They're specifically designing the app to play really nice with the Note's ability to use multi-function windows and use that S Pen to draw on photos and send them directly to Twitter. But there is no news or rumors as of yet as to when that will be released. Obviously, they're late. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Moving on to a question regarding mobile payment wars. Cameron Ring asks, great show. Question, why is it that carriers can stop the use of mobile payments with Google Wallet? I can't wrap my brain around that one. Well, Cameron, there is a war going on between the carriers Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile who have teamed up to create their own mobile payment system called Isis using NFC technology. And of course, Isis is a direct competitor with Google Wallet but they can't say that directly because that would be uh, anti or anti-competitive behavior and would likely garner a lawsuit. So instead, the carriers have said this. Google is free to offer its Google Wallet application in a manner that doesn't require integration with the secure element. Now, the secure element that the carriers are talking about here is a tamper-resistant platform that allows your phone to secure confidential data, like your credit card information, for example. But here's the kicker. The carrier's mobile payment, Isis, also requires access to the secure element, so they're just being painfully hypocritical and deserve a kick in the pants. Now, moving on to a question about how to deal with pesky notifications. Rizgar asks, Hey Jace, how do I disable app notifications? I did go to the settings and disabled it, but they keep showing up. Please help. Great question, and I know you said you did this, but for others, I want to go over the basics. First, go to settings, then apps, select the specific app, deselect notifications, press OK, and then you're done. Now that won't solve the problem for all of you. There are some developers who have unfortunately developed notifications that are very spam-like. 
Good news is that when 4.3 came out, it dealt with that effectively, but not all of you are on 4.3, so I did find a fantastic uh, app on the Google Play Store that was reviewed very well to solve that problem. It's called Notifications Off. Go check it out and let me know in the comments below how it works for you. Thanks for watching Android Peeps. Please remember if you have any questions or concerns, comments, whatever, please put them in the comments below. I read all of them. I would love to connect with you here on Twitter or Google Plus. And don't forget my brothers in Android, Josh, Joe, and the tech ninja, Kevin. I shall see you next week.